Hi, my name is Sloane Crosley, and this is from my essay, They Stay the Same Age, about Lolita and pop culture. The 90s may be best known within Lolita lore for the Adrian Lin film adaptation, but they also brought the release of The Crush, which appears to be inspired almost solely by the stern photograph. This is a film in which a writer rents an idyllic guest house and the landlord's daughter, a 16-year-old Alicia Silverstone, develops an unhinged infatuation with him. Overcome with desire, he kisses her, but then announces that she's too young for him. Note, the age gap between these two figures has inched to a mere 14 years. In the novel, it's 25, plus Humpert Humpert is 52 in the first film, 44 in the second, and 30 in The Crush. This kiss, kiss turns out to be a mistake because it directly results in the daughter unleashing bees into the writer's girlfriend's photo studio. Prior to this scene, we see Alicia Silverstone sunbathing in cat-eye sunglasses, swinging on a swing set in cat-eye sunglasses, peering over cat-eye sunglasses while rollerblading, while chatting on a cordless phone, while chewing bubblegum, while writhing about on the lawn. It's all in the spirit of entertainment, but like they say, it's all fun and games until someone gets shot in the head. At the same time The Crush was being filmed, on a bright May morning in 1992, 17-year-old Amy Fisher rang Mary Jo, Mary jo Buttafuoco's doorbell and announced that her husband was having an affair. She then shot Buttafuoco in the side of her face. The New York Post may have cornered the market on crass headlines over the years, but it was actually the Daily News that coined the tabloid blockbuster of the decade, the Long Island Lolita. What the stern photograph had started, the Amy Fisher case finished. Finally, Lolita had become weaponized by a true story. Amy Fisher was 17, and so thereafter, Lolita became 17 too, officially cleaved from the 12-year-old girl Humpert Humpert pulled out of sleepaway camp. The Fisher case was the story America couldn't get enough of, lasting through the O.J. Simpson trial two years later. This is a testament to the imaginative breadth of the scandal that anyone still cared about Amy Fisher during OJ, but they did. Especially in Hollywood, where art then began imitating life. Well, depending on your definition of art. In addition to being the impetus for the Oxygen Channel series, Snapped, Amy Fisher spawned not one, but three adaptations of her story. History has subsequently decided that Fisher was only half a monster. The other half was a very damaged and malleable kid. But at the time of her sentencing, when we still needed teen girls to be razor blade and van fearing victims, Amy Fisher offended us just by being a criminal, by being trash, by making her own choice and choosing poorly. The judge informed her that motivated by lust and passion, you were a walking stick of dynamite with the fuse lit. It seems safe to say that Amy Fisher had probably also seen too many movies but then she had a slew of them made about her. Casualties of Love stars Alyssa Milano. Fast forward to Milano's pivotal participation in the Me Too movement, and this role is, for lack of a better term, mind-blowing. There are no lollipops in Casualties of Love, but there is some seriously seductive pizza consumption. That There's Beyond Control, featuring 80s wild child Drew Barrymore, popping a maraschino cherry in her mouth within the first minute of a movie. As in Casualties of Love, Barrymore's Amy asks Joey how old he is. It's she who initiates, who pushes the conversation in the auto shop. Joey tells her he's dead on her scale, to which she responds he looks pretty good for a corpse. Oops, I lost a page. Eh, keeps on going. <laughs>